when we asked about super, um, the, the frequency, how often people got supervision, there was a really wide variation. And as you see, there are some people said they never got supervision. So these are people who are engaged in child protection work. And 3% um, were saying they never actually had supervision in relation to, the, to that work. 6% um, were getting a supervision uh, uh, at least once a week. Um, some were saying they actually got more than that. Um, the, the sort of most people were getting supervision between four and seven weeks, so that's between one month and two, and two months, whereas another bulk number, 36%, were getting it between eight and 24 weeks. And when we asked them whether or not supervision was ever cancelled, 11% were saying that it never was, and the others were saying sometimes it was for good reason, and others were saying it was, seemed to be just cancelled on an... You know, on an arbitrary uh, basis. Following on from that, we asked people whether or not they thought they got too little or too much supervision. And I suppose hardly surprisingly, only 4% of people said that they, they had too much supervision. 31%, so that's about a third, thought they had too little supervision. So this group of people, and again, thinking back to the, um, the Geese Theatre this morning, a third of the people that we questioned were saying that they didn't think they had enough supervision. And when we tried to um, split it down into the different professional groups, it was um, only 23% of nurses said they got too little supervision, but 44% of the medical staff, so that's paediatricians, GPs, felt they had too little supervision, and 41% of social workers thought they had too little supervision. When we asked what sort of supervision um, people got, the one-to-one um, -one supervision, I suppose not surprisingly, came out um, sort of as the major source of supervision that, that people had. A number of people had group supervision. Um, supervision was sometimes planned and was sometimes ad hoc. I'm not sure that this particular um, set of questions got to really to the grips of things because we were, we were allowing people to answer what, uh, to give more response, to give more than one response to a question. So some people might be having one-to-one -one supervision um, and we're also getting group supervision, we're also getting peer supervision, we're also getting paired supervision. And planned and ad hoc, again, some people were having formal planned supervision and at the same time they were having ad hoc informal supervision as well. So I'm not sh sure that we really got to grips about what the differences were and so sort of how wide were the, the differences between uh, the respondents. Um, the next one was the one that I really did um, want to, to get. I, I was conscious of the, you know, the, the notion, and we, we were looking at that this morning, about supervision having three functions, about the uh, manage, that it needed to look at management issued, uh, issues, it needed to look at the developmental issues for staff, and it needed, as, as um, most of the speakers this morning have talked about, it needed that emotional con uh, content to supervision as well, about the feeling aspects of, of um, a worker's concerns in, uh, and supervision in their work. And we did try to, to sort of get some, um, a, a question which would get to grips with how much of the time in supervision was spent on those three elements. And this is, I think this is the one, there's, a, there's more tables about this issue in the report. And it, yeah, I think you really do need to plod through that in order to get a real sense of that. But what was coming out of that was that um, about 40%, 39% of people were saying that 40% of the time, at least, was used to discuss management issues or managerial issues, case management. So it was that administrative managerial function um, that was well covered in supervision, more than 40% of the time. Whereas only 12% said that um, development issues, staff development issues, were um, looked at more than 40% of the time. And support issues, only 17% said that 40% of the time was uh, allocated to, to looking at um, support issues. And when I looked at um, a, a, a smaller amount of time, 24%, so a quarter of the people who were responding, said that less than 10% of all of their supervision time was spent on looking at those support, emotional, feeling issues in supervision. 
So I guess trying to pull that together, the, the message that was um, uh, being delivered here was that supervision generally focuses on management issues rather than developmental issues and on the emotional feeling issues of um, uh, workers. And I've, I have a, a quote in the any other co uh, comments um, um, section of the uh, report where somebody said, given that I am a senior, uh, that given that I am a senior, accountability and justification of risk management and performance management, no time is given to my development and emotional needs. And I think that was interesting thinking back, you know, the illustration this morning was about what the needs of a manager are in, in looking at some of those emotional issues. And it nearly seems that there's a recognition that um, uh, frontline staff need that, some of that emotional um, support in supervision, but very little, even less recognition that the higher people go up in the organisation, the less likely it is it's seen that they need that emotional support as well. Another res as respondent uh, said that um, supervision tended to be a victim of over-large workloads. So that there was a, a strong sense that supervision tended to get lost in the case management um, aspects of, of work. When we asked people how useful, helpful they found supervision, and I, get, I think I've, it looks good that 91% thought the supervision was either essential or useful. Um, but again, it also, the, you also get a figure which is that 70%, uh, 7% of the respondents thought that supervision was irrelevant in their work as child protection workers. And I was wondering, why, why wasn't that 100? That should have been 100% of, of people were saying it was essential or useful. Um, and when you have a look at it, when you break some of the, the uh, figures down, nursing and medical seem to, to be saying were more likely to respond that supervision was essential. Only 48% of social workers thought that supervision was essential. They thought it was useful, but only 48% uh, thought it was essential. And again, I, I was surprised by that uh, sort of response. And 17% social work respondents thought it was irrelevant, thought supervision was irrelevant. I can see a lot of, you know, this thing about looking at people's expressions, I can see that yeah, would be a surprise to, to people in the audience as well. I think it's particularly surprising, given um, you know, what people have said earlier, that given all of the, uh, you know, the inquiries that have been um, um, into child deaths um, have commented on poor supervision, on the lack of supervision, and their recommendations have included the, you know, there needs to be good supervision, there needs to be more, and I think, you know, linking back to the comment that um, Jane was, uh, the final slide um, from Tony about what he thought supervision needed to be, I just think it's really surprising we were getting that response from social workers. And Again, that just picks up some of that thing about the, 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 uh, a bit more detail about what different professionals, I don't think this one's in your handout, the, the different levels of satisfaction that people had with supervision. The report that we um, completed, the, the, uh, the, that um, I've been talking about, was put onto Baspgan's website and I also shortened it and added some questions um, and we emailed that out to all our members and said, you know, this is the responses that we were getting from the questionnaires. How does it fit with your experience? What, what is, is, you know, does this sound surprising to you? Is your experience um, different? And the plan is that we will get those um, question, we'll get responses um, to those questions back, and we'll collate them, pull those together, and then send that out again to to members, so that they've got a sense of what if there is any other comments from the membership about what supervision was like um, in their organisations. 
I'm not sure if I'm keeping up to time okay. Um, but I think that probably sort of pulls together some of the material that we did on the supervision report. And if you'd like to have access to it, there's a stand downstairs, a BASPCAN's uh, stand is downstairs, so you can pick up information from there as well. Thank you.